Hey there, AP Calc. This is your trig tutorial that will help you on your summer packet. We will be using a lot of trigonometry in AP Calc this year, and this video will cover all the basics of what you need to know in order to be successful, while most importantly, minimizing what you have to memorize. We'll talk about converting to radians, the trig unit circle outline, using special triangles, first the 30, 60, 90, and next the 45, 45, 90. First, let's talk about radians. What are radians? Radians and degrees are kind of like miles and kilometers. They're just different units for measuring the same thing, angles. But radians happen to be less arbitrary than degrees. Because if you think about it, who said that a, a full circle had to have 360 degrees? It's a completely made up number. However, radians are slightly more grounded. They actually represent something in the real world. They represent the circumference of a unit circle. Unit basically means the radius is one. So a unit circle is drawn here to the left. The radius is one. And if you think about the circumference of this circle, it is two pi r. So two pi times one, which is two pi. That means that if you go around the full circle, you end up with 360 degrees, which are going to equal 2 pi radians. So that's the conversion factor. In other words, 180 pi equals pi radians. So if you remember that, that 180 equals pi, then you will know how to convert to, um, from radians to degrees and vice versa by using ratios or a multiplying. So for example, if I am doing, if I'm trying to figure out what is pi over six, all I have to do, radians, all I have to do is remember that pi is actually equal to 180 degrees, and 180 divided by six is 30 degrees. So pi over six radians is 30 degrees. Now, the unit circle. You might have learned in pre-calculus, um, you might have had to memorize the entire unit circle in pre-calculus, but um, for my purposes and our purposes in AP Calculus, I do not recommend this. There's going to be a lot of other stuff to remember, and memorizing the unit circle will be the, should be the least of your worries. Um, you do, however, want to know how to find the critical points that lie on the actual axes. And these are really easy to figure out because, you know, the radius of the circle is 1. So just using what you know about x and y coordinates, um, x and y at 0 degrees right here. This is 0 degrees. At 0 degrees, the x is 1 and the y is 0. At 90 degrees, the x is 0 and the y is 1. At 180 degrees, the x is negative 1 and the y is 0. And at 270 degrees, the x is 0 and the y is negative 1. Now, how do you find sine and cosine from all of that? You have to remember that the cosine is going to be your x-coordinate, and your sine is going to be your y-coordinate. Um, so cosine is, is basically the adjacent side down here, and it's the x, the same as the x, and the sine is the vertical component, which is the same as the y. Now, basically, you can also remember that by um, remembering alphabetical order. x comes before y, c comes before s. x, y, cosine, sine. So sine of pi, pi, uh, pi over 2. Well, first, what's pi over 2? Pi is 180, so 180 over 2 is 90 degrees. So this is sine of 90. You go up to 90 degrees up here, and you look at the sine coordinate, meaning the y coordinate. So that would be the 1. So this is going to be 1 here. Next, let's take a look at cosine of pi. Pi we know is 180, so cosine of 180 is off to the side. And what we see here is the cosine is the x component, so that would be the negative 1. Tangent is um, not as straightforward, but it's not hard. Tangent is, you, rem you might remember from pre-calculus, it's the same thing as sine of the angle over cosine of the angle. So if you know the sine and the cosine, you can find the tangent very easily. Now, first of all, what is 3 pi over 2? Well, again, pi is 180. 
So 3 times 180 divided by 2 should give you 270 degrees. So this is 270 degrees, which is um, the component down here. Okay. Now let's do the sine. So the sine is the second coordinate, which would be the negative 1. And the cosine would be the x coordinate, which is the 0. Negative 1 over 0 obviously does not exist. You can't divide by 0. So the tangent of 3 pi over 2 does not exist. Ta-da! No memorization required. Now, you will have to memorize the actual special triangles, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. The triangle uh, 30, 60, 90 is shown to the left. So what you do if you're trying to find the trig functions of 5 pi over 6, first you convert 5 pi over 6 to degrees. So again, plugging in 5 times 180 over 6, um, you should get, let's see, 900 over 6, which is 150 degrees. You plot that. So you, this is your starting point, always and forever, right here. And 150 falls in your second quadrant, so somewhere around here. And whenever you draw the special, um, whenever you draw your reference triangle, you are always going to use your x-axis as one of the sides. Never, ever, ever use the y here. Never, ever, ever use that. Now, when you are finding your reference angle, the reference angle is the angle, the inner angle here. You subtract 180 minus 150. That's 30. So the other angles are 60 and 90. Okay. Now we label the sides. We look at the special triangle we have off to the side here. Opposite 30 is a 1. So opposite 30, I have a 1 here. Opposite 60, I have a root 3. And the hypotenuse is 2. One more thing I have to worry about are negative signs. The hypotenuse is always positive. The sides, x and y, are positive whether or not they are on or parallel to the positive axis and negative if they're parallel or on the negative axis. So the 3, as you can see, it lie, the root 3, as you can see, it lies on the negative x-axis. So that root 3 is negative. But the 1 is parallel to the positive y-axis. So that's positive. Now, we just, um, all we have to do is evaluate sine, cosine, and tangent. So the sine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be given by opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over 2. The cosine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be given by um, the adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative root 3 over 2. And then the tangent of 5 pi over 6 is going to be given by the opposite over the adjacent, which is 1 over negative root 3. And you can rationalize to your heart's content, but as we discussed in a previous lesson, you do not need to do that for the AP exam. It is perfectly correct to have a root on the denominator. Next, let's take a look at the 45-45-90 triangle. The process is the same as before. First, you convert to degrees. So 5 times 180 over 4, 900 over 4, should give you 225 degrees. 225 degrees is in your third quadrant. And when you draw your special triangle, once again, you use the x-axis always and forever, never the y. You subtract to find the reference, which will give you 45 degrees. And then you label the sides of the triangle just like the triangle to the left. The two sides are 1 and 1, and the hypotenuse is root 2. Thinking about positives and negatives, the hypotenuse is always positive. The 1 going down is parallel to the negative y-axis, so this is a negative 1 down here. And then the 1 going left is also negative because it lies on the negative x-axis. Next, let's actually evaluate the sine of 5 pi over 4 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over root 2. The adjacent is exactly the same. It's still negative 1 over root 2, so that would be your cosine here is negative 1 over root 2. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent, which in this case would be 1. Um, again, you can rationalize as you wish, but you don't need to. 
basically, to summarize, the reason I highly recommend this method over just simply memorizing the unit circle is number one, you see where the unit circle is derived from, but number two, you don't have to memorize the unit circle. The only thing you have to memorize are these two lovely triangles, and you don't need to do anything um, in terms of remembering anything else, which is great, because that's why you are in AP Calc, right? Um, all right, so when you're looking at these two triangles, you got one, two, root three on this one. That's how I remember it, one, two, root three. And then remember that the smallest side goes with the smallest angle. So one is opposite 30, and the two is the largest, which is opposite it's opposite the 90 degree angle. And then this other triangle is even easier to remember. It's one, one, and the root two is easily derived from the Pythagorean theorem. That's it. <laughs>